Are your food cravings truly yours, or were they programmed in you before you were born by chemicals that hijack your hormones? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining how endocrine disrupting chemicals can steer what you reach for, how much you eat, and how your brain learns to crave it. I'm Alara Skye. We're focusing on evidence that early exposure to these chemicals rewires reward pathways, shifts hormones, and sets patterns that follow you into adulthood, affecting appetite, weight, mood, and learning. Endocrine disrupting chemicals, or EDCs, mimic or block your natural hormones. They interfere with signals that coordinate metabolism, appetite, mood, and cognition. When those signals are scrambled early, the effects persist shaping food preferences and how your body stores fat across your lifespan. At ENDO 2025, researchers from the University of Texas at Austin presented work on a developmental exposure to an EDC cocktail called Neuromix. They tracked rats from early life into adulthood to see how those chemicals altered food choices and mapped the biology behind the behavior. The pattern was clear. Exposed males showed a temporary preference for sugar water, while females favored high-fat food and gained weight. Hormones shifted too. Exposed males had markedly lower testosterone, which influences energy, mood, and weight regulation, while estradiol levels in females remained normal. The team also analyzed gene expression in regions that govern reward and feeding. They saw sex-specific epigenetic changes, alterations in chromatin remodeling, histone modification, and DNA methylation. These processes were downregulated in the lateral hypothalamus and ventral tegmental area of exposed males and upregulated in the nucleus accumbens of both sexes, revealing a durable imprint on motivation circuits. If you're wondering where EDCs come from, start with what children eat. Nearly 70% of kids' diets are ultra-processed foods, and those products commonly carry EDCs in their ingredients and packaging. That means repeated hormonal interference during years when your brain and metabolism are setting long-term patterns. Artificial dyes illustrate the concern. Tartrazine and erythrocine brighten snacks, cereals, candies, and drinks, yet they disrupt thyroid signaling. Erythrocine has been linked to reduce T3 and T4, an increased thyroid-stimulating hormone, an imbalance that touches energy use, growth, and cognition. Preservatives such as parabens add another layer. Parabens can act like estrogen by binding to its receptors and can inhibit enzymes involved in hormone synthesis and metabolism, including aromatase. That shifts hormonal tone and alters how hormones are produced and broken down. Packaging matters too. BPA in plastics and can linings disrupts estrogen and thyroid pathways. Phthalates in wraps and containers can lower testosterone by interfering with hormone synthesis and they can displace hormones from carrier proteins, such as sex hormone binding globulin, changing how much hormone is available to your tissues. Even better for you labels can mislead. Artificial sweeteners like sucralose and aspartame are calorie free, but they can alter your gut microbiota and confound metabolic signaling tied to insulin and fat storage. That confusion acts indirectly as endocrine disruption, skewing how you process and respond to food. The impact extends into attention and learning. A meta-analysis in Nature Review's endocrinology linked prenatal and early life exposure to EDCs, including BPA, phthalates, triclosan, and PFAS, with higher risks of childhood obesity and neurological issues. Children exposed before birth showed more frequent ADH symptoms and lower IQ scores. PFAS, the so-called forever chemicals, are strongly associated with rapid early weight gain and higher obesity risk by school age. The prenatal window is especially vulnerable, and across studies, boys emerge as consistently more susceptible to these early life insults. Researchers also documented changes in physical growth. Prenatal PFAS exposure correlated with altered infant and child growth patterns, increased adiposity that can persist, and higher waist-to-height ratios. Early metabolic warning signs that often precede chronic disease. Two mechanisms stand out. 
distorted thyroid signaling during development changes brain structure, leading to measurable drops in IQ and attention. Meanwhile, chemicals such as PFOA and PFOS overactivate PPAR gamma, a master regulator of fat cell formation, pushing your body toward creating and storing more fat from the start. What can you do now? Start by avoiding ultra-processed foods. Prioritize whole natural choices, organic fruits and vegetables and grass-fed meats, so you cut both the additives and the packaging-related exposures that ride along with packaged products. Next, pay attention to linoleic acid. It's abundant in the modern food supply, limiting intake to under 5 grams per day and ideally below 2 grams helps protect mitochondrial function and metabolic health. Use the upcoming Mercola Health Coach app and its seed oil sleuth feature to track your intake to a tenth of a gram. Filter your water. Bottled and tap water can carry microplastics and related chemicals. Install high quality filtration at your home's entry point and at the tap and carry refillable glass or stainless steel bottles to cut daily exposures. Scrutinize packaging and kitchen habits. Choose foods in glass rather than plastic. Don't microwave food in plastic. Store leftovers in glass, ceramic, or stainless steel to prevent heat-driven leaching into your meals. Upgrade kitchenware. Each slice on a plastic cutting board sheds microplastics. Swap plastic boards for wood or glass. Replace plastic utensils and non-stick cookware with stainless steel to reduce particles and chemical coatings mixing into your food. Choose natural textiles. Synthetic fabrics like polyester, nylon, and acrylic shed microfibers with every wear and wash. Prioritize organic cotton, linen, and wool when you can. If synthetics are necessary, wash them less often and use microfiber catching bags or filters. Finally, consider natural progesterone to counter estrogen-mimicking effects from EDCs. This strategy aims to restore a steadier hormonal balance when you're navigating a landscape saturated with estrogen-like signals from plastics and additives. If you grew up on ultra-processed foods or you're raising kids amid them, this isn't about blame, it's about clarity. You now know how EDCs distort reward circuitry, tilt hormones, and nudge weight and cognition in the wrong direction, starting early and echoing across years. Your challenge today is to pick two steps from the strategies we covered and implement them for the next seven days. For example, switch all leftovers to glass and eliminate one category of ultra-processed snacks that includes artificial dyes or parabens. At the same time, begin tracking your daily linoleic acid and aim for under five grams. Notice how your cravings, energy, and focus respond as exposures drop. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.